Hey guys, it's Maria. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're not too sick of seeing my face over and over yet because we're back for another talking video. I asked you to ask me questions on the community tab and I was surprised to see how many people actually responded to that post, commented with one question or two or a few more. So thank you to everyone who submitted questions. I can't wait to tell you a little bit more about myself. Let's get into the video. Question number one is, is your family also musically talented like you? Thank you for saying that and Yes, but not all of them are musicians by profession. So when I started playing piano, um, I was four and I started with my grandma. She was a Russian piano literature teacher um, at a music conservatory in Ukraine. And she, I think my, my love for music started with her because she always made it so fun and so enjoyable to learn piano, play music, make music, listen to music all of all of those things um we were always playing games she made games out of everything whether it was learning music notes or music theory um and one of my favorite things that she would do is she would sit at the piano and just play whatever and i would sit at the table and draw whatever came to mind based on what i was hearing and i also sometimes would um dance around the piano and i never felt self-conscious um, when you're a kid, obviously you don't you don't know about those things. Um, it was just such a good time, and we would play a lot of duets together. We would sing together. Um, so yeah, that's where I believe my love for music really started. And eventually, I did move on to taking weekly lessons with uh, piano teachers but that was my start. With my parents, they both grew up with music as did a lot of kids in the ex-Soviet Union. They kind of grew up with the Soviet RCM, I guess you could say. My mom got really far in the system and my dad quit when he was at level two. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, I can't do this anymore, but he took up guitar. And from what I gather um, from old photos, obviously I wasn't around when my dad was in college, but he was that fun guy with the guitar, like singing songs at the fire that sort of vibe so that's really cool um, and my mom was always really present in my education um, especially my music education she was at every single lesson she was taking notes she was practicing with me pretty much every single hour um, guiding mentoring coaching all the way through high school which was so amazing and she's gonna kill me for saying this but um, I feel like because she wasn't a music professor she hadn't had it all figured out um, I feel like that brought us closer because we were making discoveries along the way, learning, making mistakes, falling, getting back up, and we were doing it together, which I think was really cool. Question number two is, where do you see yourself in five or ten years? So this is such an interesting question, and I feel like I would have been better at answering it when I was in high school, when I had less of an idea of what it actually means to be a musician. It was just like, I want to be a performer, that's all. Um, but the world is changing so much, especially right now, that I feel like giving myself um, some harsh like rules that I have to follow might become a problem later on because if I just say that I want to be this one thing, that might become obsolete in the years to come. So I feel like if I just give myself some general guidelines following my passions and what I want to do, I'll be okay. So I'll share those with you. Um, first of all, this channel. I really, really, really love making these videos, connecting with you guys, uploading weekly, and having a chance to build this community. So definitely, I would love for this channel, as long as YouTube's gonna exist, I'm gonna exist on here. So for the next five to 10 years and beyond, I wanna have this YouTube channel. That's the first thing. The second one is I love collaborating. And I mentioned that in my previous video, whether that means sharing my passion for music with others through videos, actually collaborating with other uh, musicians, teaching actual students, um, that's kind of the direction I'm going in. So hopefully if I play my cards right, whatever that means, I don't even honestly know, my future is gonna be a combination of all of those things together. Question number three is super real. Are you afraid of the future of not getting enough jobs well paid as a musician? Literally, yes, every single day. And I feel like especially now with the pandemic, everything stopped. Like I was just 
starting to get my web going, you know, the, the network of connections, they start to get referrals from people. I was just starting to like discover that when I collaborate and I actually do a good job of playing the music, I'm gonna get called back. Not only that, I might get a referral from those people to another person who needs a collaborator. When I have students and they enjoy my teaching style, they're gonna tell their friends and I'm gonna have even more students. And I also learned that if you play a good concert, they're gonna call you back and spread the word that you're a good concert performer. And I was just starting to get like to understand that and to even kind of reap the benefits of like last year's work. Um, when all of that literally just got destroyed. It was like, oh no, none of that works anymore. None of that is valid. All of the things you were trying to learn and like figure out and invest in for yourself, they don't work anymore. Obviously I'm still a student, so I shouldn't even be thinking about these things until I finish school, but I am and I'm also really excited, to be honest. Like, there's no point in just moping and being sad. I think you always have to look at the positives and the opportunities where other people don't necessarily see them. And I love that I am one of those creators of the many channels that are like, being born right now out of this pandemic. It's been really fun seeing all of these other creators out there that are also pushing music and their love of music because all this pandemic did was reveal what was wrong with classical music. It just showed us like this was bound to happen. It just happened sooner. The way the classical music world has been operating for the past few decades just doesn't work anymore. Something has to give. We need a change and I'm so excited to actually be a part of that change. Let me just turn on the light. Sorry guys, there's like literally a thunderstorm going on outside. Um, I don't know what's happening. It's not even the evening. It's like 2 p.m. <sighs> Question number four. Que Question number four. If you could learn another instrument, what would it be? Um, I love this question. This is probably one of my favorites. So thank you so much for asking this. Um, did you see that flicker? I've been thinking about this lately. And um, if you watched my other video about my next steps, I talked about how at the beginning of first year, like all throughout first year really, I sat in on a lot of orchestra rehearsals. And during that time, I got to learn a lot more um, about the different roles of the instruments and uh, the roles of the instruments in the orchestra. Obviously every single symphonic work, orchestral work is different, but I kind of got like a general feel for my favorite instruments. And for some reason they always gravitated, like my favorites were always the ones that were in the background holding everything together. I really loved those instruments that you don't necessarily, like your ear isn't drawn to them, but if they're missing, you hear it. Like they add a depth of field. Without them, the music is kind of shallow. Like there's no foundation, both rhythm rhythmically and like harmonically. So my two that I narrowed it down to were double bass and percussion, mainly drum set, but also timpani, um, marimba, xylophone. So I was actually telling myself this the other day, um, when I'm in my 30s or 40s or whenever I have time and money to take like extra fun lessons, for sure I'm gonna take drum lessons and double bass lessons, probably just drum. And also I always thought that it would be cool to like be my own jazz piano trio like the Oscar Peterson trio. I thought that would be so cool. And they have the pianist, the drummer, and the double bass player. I don't know, maybe that's weird. What are your interests besides music? That's funny you asked that because, well, obviously this channel is one of my only hobbies right now. It's what I do for fun, what I do whenever I have the free time to spend on something else. Um, but I have another, a long lost love that First, I wasn't keeping up with because I moved to Toronto for undergrad and now because of COVID, and that's dance. 
Growing up, I did a lot of ballet, jazz, lyrical, tap, musical theater. I even did hip hop for a year, but I was absolute garbage at it and I hated it. It's like one does not belong out of these. But I grew up dancing and I even wanted to be a dancer at some point. I wanted to be a dancer in Disneyland. But as I moved into middle school and high school and I started to get more serious about piano, I had to cut down on everything else I was doing, including dance. So what ended up happening was I finished high school with just one form of dance and that was tap. The rhythmic one, right? Going back to like the percussion and the drums and everything. My favorite form of dance that I did was and always will be jazz. And I just think it was always the most fun for me. It, and it still is. I actually took some classes last year, last fall, um, some private lessons when things just started to open up but then quickly closed again. And it just confirmed how much I love jazz. The reason I couldn't continue with jazz as I did with tap was, um, at least at my dance studio, you couldn't just take jazz competitively, you had to also take ballet and I think a bunch of other um, classes and that was kind of against what I was trying to do. I was trying to cut down, not take a bunch more classes. So <sighs> kind of hurts my heart to say that I had to quit jazz way too early. So again, added to my list of lessons when I'm in my 30s or 40s, drum lessons, double bass, and jazz dance. Who is your favorite composer and why the classic? So lately, and I always say this, my favorite composer is always the one I was working on seriously last. And for me right now, that's Rachmaninoff. That's your textbook answer. But apart from that, his melodies, his harmonies, his soaring long phrases um, just speak to me on a very, very deep and personal level. He is a Russian composer and I'm Ukrainian, but I grew up listening to Russian and Ukrainian music, watching those films, cartoons, reading those storybooks. It's always gonna strike a chord. It's always gonna be very near and dear to my heart. Um, so yes, my composer right now, my favorite is Rachmaninoff. And apart from that, even when I move on to other pieces, Rock 2 is gonna be forever on my list of top pieces ever. I actually grew up listening to Rock 2 because what my mom would do when I was little is she would take tiny snippets of classical music and she only told me this about like like years later. I actually thought um, that they were real songs. She took snippets of classical music, took like Russian poems, nursery rhymes and stuff and she just put them over top of each other when they fit and sang them to me. I had no idea. <laughs> and um, one of my favorite songs that she would sing was based on the main theme in Rock 2, First Movement, that you hear in the orchestra. So it was only a matter of time for me until I learned Rock 2. It was always on my list. I was always going to learn it no matter what. And it just happened to be this year. And last but not least, a scary one to answer. Did you ever think of quitting piano? So... This is hard to say. I definitely had moments where I questioned whether I wanted to be a musician and mainly whether I was good enough um, to be a respectable person, a good musician. One of those moments was when I didn't get into my first choice school at the time with the professor I wanted to study with. Um, I really felt like my world fell apart at that point and I had to glue myself back together. But also that was another door opening and that actually led to me discovering what I actually wanted to do as a musician. Sometimes going down the path less taken or the one that you don't expect ends up being a good thing as I learned. Um, apart from that, I had some hardships growing up to do with my musical career and that made me question 
um, whether or not music was a good career option for me. And those deserve a video on their own. I'm not gonna get it, into it too much, but I do remember writing in my journal, I will never quit piano. And to future Maria, if you ever feel like quitting, just open up your journal to this page and read this sentence. And I wasn't even that old. I think I was in middle school or high school and I'm not totally sure I remember what exactly I was feeling when I wrote that. I don't think I wanted to quit at that point, but I was scared with everything that was going on that there would be a moment where I wouldn't want to continue. And I just wanted to take all the preventative measures to keep that from happening. And I went back to read those few sentences in my journal many, many times. So that just goes to show, of course, of course we all have our doubts. We think about whether or not um, we're good enough, whether or not we wanna do this, if it's worth our time. But really, even in those moments where like, oh, screw everything, I'm not gonna play piano ever again. Then I just sit and I ask myself, okay, so what do you wanna do? Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to go to medical school? Do you want to be a lawyer? Do you want to be a software developer? Do you want to be a nurse? No. <laughs> like, I just want to be a musician. I want to make music. It's my passion. Like, it's the thing that makes me get up in the morning, the thing that pushes me, gets me through the day. It's my passion. So there you go, guys. That's it for this video. And again, thank you to anyone who asked questions. If I didn't have time to answer all of them and there were some repeats, comment them down below and I'll be sure to answer every single one of your comments. You know I do. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and if you want to watch some more of my videos, you can do that right here. Bye, guys.